Okay, for those playing the home game, here's the question. Is it easier to hold your breath after inhalation? Or is it easier to hold your breath after exhalation? See, and you can try it out for yourself and see which method allows you to hold your breath for longer. I suggest you pause the video here. I don't want to see it pass out. Okay, moving on. So let's go with the science on this. So why is it easier to hold your breath? Hopefully you found after inhalation, you should be able to hold your breath longer than after you exhale. So your body actually cannot detect low oxygen, but it is very sensitive to high carbon dioxide. Your brain actually uses blood carbon dioxide as an indicator for blood oxygen. This assumes so when CO2 levels are too high, you are signaled to take a breath. It's assuming when CO2 levels are high, that oxygen levels are low. This is kind of the exchange that's going on in the capillaries of your lungs. So let's prove the concept. Well, if you think that, well, I think my body can sense the oxygen level. It's not it's nothing to do with carbon dioxide. Uh, consider carbon monoxide poisoning. It happens because you're breathing air with low oxygen, but and believe it or not, the carbon dioxide CO2 levels, remember carbon monoxide is just CO, the CO2 levels are the same in your body in which regulates your breathing as usual. So you die without ever realizing you were oxygen deprived. This is what happens when um, carbon monoxide poisoning is so dangerous because you'll black out without any warning. You're just breathing along normally because your body actually has the same amount of carbon dioxide which is using the sense, but your oxygen levels are actually decreasing at a very rapid and potentially very dangerous uh, rate uh, with carbon monoxide. So the science behind the question. So when your lungs are full of a breath of air, you have a high oxygen concentration and a lower carbon dioxide concentration than your blood does. So when you inhale, um, the oxygen flows to your blood and CO2 out of the blood. So there's still exchange that occurs because you have a large volume of air. Empty lungs, after you exhale, have a lower volume, so fewer carbon dioxide molecules are needed to get the same concentration in your blood that's going to raise that level that much quicker. Because of this, carbon dioxide stops leaving your blood faster, the lungs are empty, meaning the CO2 levels in your blood reach a <coughs> critical level faster and causes you to need or feel that burn of needing to breathe sooner then when you inhale, there's still exchanging that's occurring here, and it's through the um, body's ability to monitor the carbon dioxide levels and has nothing to do with oxygen levels. So we see that here, that kind of urgent need to breathe here, high carbon dioxide levels, that burning feeling, because your body wants to try to reduce that carbon dioxide, because it's assuming this increase in carbon dioxide is leading to a decrease in oxygen. It can only sense and determine the carbon dioxide levels because it's going to change, believe it or not, the pH of your blood, and that's what your body is sensing. So hopefully this gives you just a little bit of a background here of is it easier to hold your breath after breathing in or breathing out? And if you are in a situation do you have to hold your breath, take the deepest breath you can possible, so fill your lungs with a lot of air to allow that exchange to occur for a longer period of time, giving you that ability to not feel that urgent need to breathe until later, then if you were to exhale, that concentration would increase much quicker.